Next, what can you as an individual do about this challenge of good leadership or great leadership? Far more than you realize. So, good is the enemy of great. Shall we treat in that way? Many people are good at their job and few are great. Look at a sport like NCAA basketball. Each year, there are 20 to 25 good teams. But only one great team has the ability to win the national championship. Only a limited number of programs have the great leadership to have a contending team each year. So that means whatever may be the number of teams that participate. So those who get enrolled or registered to the tournament, obviously they have the will power or the required qualities to contest or play the game. But eventually, winner could be only one out of the 25. So that is what here we are trying to convey or trying to stress. And it is relatively easy to be a good at your job. By virtue of the fact that you are attending this conference and settling here today, you are probably very good at your job. But it is extremely difficult to go from good to great. Good is the enemy of great because we often become complacent when we are good. So as if good is good enough. We work so long and hard to become good that we can reach that level, that job, that place. We are lulled into accepting good. So there is no end point. So as far as a career is concerned, one cannot put a full stop. So always there is an opportunity to improve. So, we need to understand that there is no statuation point. Till there is competition, there is scope for growth and scope for achievement. So, we have to keep moving further and trying to reach the next level rather than getting satisfied with the current level or what we feel it as good. So, the importance of technology. Processes produce results and people build and execute processes. Change management by leaders improves the process and processes are retain valued knowledge. Technology sustains the improvement, prevents backside. So, we have at least the three categories to four categories where processes produce results which we cannot deny. So, there is a structure that what input is being provided that gets processed and from that only we get the outcome, that is output. So, input, process, output or we can say input plus process is equal to output. So, what is the input that is being given and the central area of process was only to work with what is given as input and based on that only output will come and if in input is poor, we can't expect a better output. Same way, if input is good, obviously output should be good. In case if there is a problem with the process, naturally the result will be the other way. So, processes produce results and people build and execute process. Change management by leader improves the process. So, ultimately when the seat or the role is occupied by some other person, in the absence or in the place of the existing person, there could be a change. We can't expect the similarity, but if it is happening, then it could be an exception. And uh, suppose if any change is required or any improvement is required, if the role is replaced by new heads or fresh heads, obviously the change can be better. And processes retain valued knowledge. So, processes when takes a shape and it is able to retain the valued knowledge. And technology sustains the improvement, prevents backslide. So, the purpose of technology is to see that everything goes in a proper way without any deviation, distraction and diversion and able to reach the expected or desired outcome and uh, so 
technology also is not ideal and it keeps changing so whatever difficulties or whatever lapses that can be seen from the existing process that can be met or that can be overcome by technological changes or developments that leads to prevention of backslide so any problems or any obstacles that we face that could be overcome by technology and it will avoid failure so here backslide we need to take it as a failure or a delay in process so all these things can be overcome by the appropriate technology that is being applied from time to time good is the enemy of great so as we have already discussed many people are good at their job and only few are great so take the uh, example of a basketball tournament which we have seen already if 25 teams are participating only one team is able to perform or able to win the tournament and uh, so that is what here it means so whether you are playing to be good or you want to be great so there is some difference or what we need to understand is there is no end for success so once you are able to reach a particular level that is not the full stop or that is not the end so how to move further to be successful because competition one thing is one thing that will be prevailing forever and whatever may be the area you are into whether you are into sports or you are into politics or you are into technology or you are into any other form of uh, uh, profession so competition prevails at all levels and how do you project yourself or how do you prove yourself so that is what going to take you to the next level so good is the enemy of great is a wonderful concept or a term as good is not going to allow you to proceed further or it is bringing a full top full stop so that you have a feeling that having enough is enough so there won't be any aspiration or aim to go further or to move further so great is the one which will keep you active and keep on practicing or keep on working for achieving something more so good is equal to customer satisfaction and great is equal to client success so when the customer is satisfied the absence of complaints are there we are not going to focus on that and great is client success helping others achieve goals it is not only trying to fulfill one's own requirements or commitments but also thinking about other persons expectations other persons wishes so that is what the real client success is all about so it can increase or improve the relationship and somehow or other we used to say that it is the rapo that can be developed by being great rather than being good enough the search continues post war world war 2 focus on management era of hard assets 1980s dr deming and quality 1990s tom peters excellence and 2000 jim collins good to great so it is clear today that leadership is more valuable than management after world war 2 america became the manufacturing giant of the world through strong management theory we outproduced every country in the world and built america into the greatest and most wealthiest nation in history but somewhere in the early 1980s something changed we think the catalyst of the changes was the pc because with the pc information started to flow to individuals not be the proprietary domain of the corporation in a manufacturing and a management world individuals were defined by the number of people or plants that they managed but as we have transition to an information society the individual contributor now plays a much more significant role this is a power to the people shift on a manufacturing line the one person putting the left front tire on the car could not impact the corporation 
in your information world. The one person at the computer running payroll can rock your world either good or bad. Lots of great authors and books have addressed this cover the past 30 years. The clear major trend is this. People are more critically important to the success of your organization today and they require leadership more than management. So, who is required or what sort of quality is required as far as a profession is concerned, whether you need a manager or a leader. So, as the term says, a manager is only managing the situation and leader is one who leads from the front and only a leader can have followers rather than the manager. 